In any science class, we're encouraged to inquire and investigate physical phenomena to better understand the world around us. But with the exploration often comes risk, so safety in a science classroom is a very serious concern. Now in this course, you'll be presented with a number of opportunities to demonstrate your understanding of safety standards in a science classroom. Your first chance with this is to document your understanding of the Workplace Hazardous Material Information System, or WIMIS. And this video is a summary of the things you need to know when it comes to WIMIS. Now Canada's hazard communication standard in the workplace is WIMIS, but you might be more familiar with the household product safety symbols. These would be the bony hand on a bottle of bleach or that explosive symbol on an aerosol can. But the purpose is the same, and that's to identify hazards associated with using products that we need for routine functions, whether this is at home or in the workplace. Now, WIMIS has four main components. The first of these is identifying the hazard and classifying the product according to the potential danger it presents. Of course, it's quite possible that a given product can be hazardous in more than one of the WIMIS categories, and this would have to be reflected in how it's identified. Once a product is classified as hazardous, it's critical for those using it, even working in proximity to it, are aware of the potential danger or dangers associated with the substance. And this is addressed by a standard labeling system set out by the WIMIS legislation. But labels carry limited information, so WIMIS requires controlled products to have a material safety data sheet, or MSDS, with details about the hazards and the precautions necessary to use the product safely and respond effectively in the event of an accident occurring during its use. And last, but definitely not least, is education and training of workers and students, which of course is the purpose of this video. Now it's sad to say that it took our government three decades to enact this legislation, but it comes down to workers, you and me, having the right to know the potential hazards we face while working with or around materials and chemicals. Now our health may be compromised in a number of ways, ranging from mild to serious, but damage can result to the nervous system, lungs, or kidneys, and the effects might not be seen for some time, like cancer or sterility, or they may be more immediate, like burns or rashes. Burns that result from fires or explosions that also pose a risk to buildings and the safety of those not necessarily close to the product. So the injuries and illnesses, even deaths, caused by hazardous materials, as well as the building losses and medical costs, these are the things WIMIS is meant to reduce or stop. Now materials and substances regulated by WIMIS are referred to as controlled products, and these fall into one or more of six WIMIS categories. Now the first category, Class A, refers to gases held under pressure in closed containers. An example would be a fire extinguisher, a device critical for safety that can also have perils associated with it. And the risk here is the force with which the gas can be exhausted from the container should it get punctured, or even worse, the canister itself can become a projectile as a result of the escaping gas. And Class B materials are flammable, that is, substances that ignite easily, say with a spark, or combustible, materials that burn easily in the presence of a flame. And Class C refers to oxidizing materials. Now notice that this symbol is rather similar to Class B, and that's because these materials are also highly flammable. But the added risk here is that these materials are what is referred to as pyrophoric. That is, they ignite when exposed directly to oxygen, a substance that makes up over 20% of the air in any science class. Now Class D, poisonous and infectious materials, is one classification broken up into three divisions. Division 1 for immediate and toxic effects. Say, on a hot day, someone mistakes paint thinner, a clear colorless liquid, for water and chugs a significant quantity. True story. The patient would have to be rushed to a hospital to have their stomach pumped. True story. Division 2, for other toxic effects, needing less urgent medical attention. Again, a true story, but a student mistook a bottle of silver nitrate, another clear colorless liquid, again for water and took a sip. While the timing was not as critical, she still had to be taken to a doctor to be sure there were no toxic effects. Division 3 is for biohazardous infectious materials, which can have serious effects, but these usually manifest over longer timelines. You often see this symbol on receptacles in hospitals for spent needles and latex gloves used to treat sick patients. I like to think of these divisions as setting the priority for a response, with Division 1 requiring immediate medical attention and a wider response window for Division 2. And for Division 3, while potentially fatal, effects might not show up for weeks or months or even years. Next we have Class E for corrosive materials. This would be similar to that bony hand on a bottle of bleach. This corrosive material might cause a rash or burning if directly on skin, or result in clothing or other materials decomposing due to contact. And finally, we have Class F for dangerously reactive materials. 
Now often these substances fall under one of the other categories, but the added danger here is that storing these materials with certain other materials now allow them to react violently, perhaps causing an explosion or some toxic gas being released. An example of this would be the chlorinated compounds in bleach reacting with the ammonia in window cleaner in a cupboard to release chlorine gas, a substance used in chemical warfare. Again, awareness of potential risks is a critical part of WIMIS, and labeling plays a key role in this awareness. So most controlled substances must be accompanied by either supplier or workplace labels. Now in a classroom experiment using beakers and test tubes, we don't label these, but the experiment should be let off with a discussion of the WIMIS risks associated with the chemicals in use. Now here's an example of the label a science student would typically see, a workplace label. The information listed should include at least the name of the substance, for example, hydrochloric acid, the WIMIS risk classification, or all that relate to the material, and safety precautions to be taken while using the product. First aid and other more detailed information will be on the MSDS, and reference to this can be listed on the label, but the catalog, which is located in the science office, is searchable and in alphabetic order. Now it's critical that labels are prominently displayed and clearly legible, so don't be afraid to speak up if you feel this could use improvement in your classroom. And when in doubt about a substance, make sure to ask your teacher. So WIMIS is the law. This is why you should be receiving this training at the beginning of every science course in high school. It's been the law since 1988, even though it was first proposed in the 50s. The legislation includes the Hazardous Products Act and the Hazardous Materials Information Review Act. Now both schools and students are responsible for WIMIS. The school has a duty to provide training to science students as there's always the potential to be exposed, whether or not you're aware of it, to hazardous substances in a science classroom. We also have an obligation to ensure that labeling is properly displayed and that supporting documentation like the MSDS is readily available. And student responsibilities under WIMIS include participating in training, hence this video, and you'll be responsible for demonstrating your understanding of WIMIS in a quiz when you've completed this training. You should also observe safety procedures like labeling and speak up when you feel your safety and that of your colleagues is threatened. The bottom line is safety. No WIMIS for when you're at school and no household product safety symbols for when you're home. And our final critical component of WIMIS is the material safety data sheet. Now these are supplied with the product when they're purchased and are printed by the manufacturer. The formats may differ, but the critical information must still be found there. So let's look at the details. First, there's the product information. This will be at least the product name, and if applicable, the chemical information like the formula. And beside this, you can see the hazard ratings. There are typically two ratings on the MSDS, the NFPA for firefighters and the WIMIS rating, which is our interest here. And in the WIMIS rating, there are three categories, health, flammability, and reactivity. There's a number associated with the degree of severity of risk, and the legend for these ratings is located right under the two charts. And we move down to the physical data section if we need to know things like the solubility or melting point of the substance. While the fire and explosion data provide critical information for teachers, please know fire safety rules and call your teacher, and for firefighters if they're called to deal with it. And next we have the reactivity data. This helps us determine how to store the product and when to exercise additional caution if using this with other products, whether or not these fall under WIMIS. And then there are the toxicological properties of the material. And this information includes how the substance can enter the body and what the effects, both immediate and long term, are when exposed to the product. And preventive measures spell out the protective clothing like goggles or aprons to wear when handling the product, as well as considerations for things like storing it or preventing spills. And last but definitely not least, we have the first aid section, which provides details of the procedure that must be followed should an accident occur while using the substance, like seeking medical attention or flushing eyes for at least 15 minutes. Now note the date the MSDS was prepared. We're required to have documents prepared no longer than three years before today's date. Manufacturers must update that MSDS within this time frame. Please note that part of your quiz after this training will be to find relevant information on a particular MSDS. Now let's be careful out there.